So if you've watched any of my live streams or hopped into the Discord, you may know that I absolutely love 3D printing. Now, one of the nice things about 3D printing for someone like myself, who's very techy, loves my gadgets, loves to stream, and likes to, you know, just improve my overall environment that I, you know, do my hobbies in, is that I can print a lot of things that would normally cost a decent amount of money. Now, before you close this video, because you're thinking to yourself, I don't have a 3D printer, how is this going to be useful to me? Well, there are a lot of ways to get 3D printed parts without having a 3D printer yourself. One of the main ones that a lot of people don't know is that a lot of your local public libraries will actually have a 3D printer. For example, the Toronto Public Library System is aiming to have a 3D printing center in every one of their public libraries, and they're a super inexpensive way to get some 3D printed parts. Well, that's actually how I started 3D printing. I would find designs online, or I would make a quick little simple design, and I would go to the, the library and it would cost me 10 cents per gram to print out anything. Now, if your local public library does not have 3D printers, you still have a few options. One, you can go online, usually Facebook Marketplace and other local groups, and you can actually find people who rent out their equipment or who provide a 3D printing service for you. Now, if they're much smaller scale like myself, you know, they'll usually print things for a pretty, pretty good price uh, and not really charge you much of a markup. On average, I charged about 10 to 20 cents per gram, depending on the material that I was printing with. And that really wasn't giving me much of a margin in, in general. I was just trying to help people out. Another solution that may be helpful to you is if a friend has a 3D printer, offer to buy them some lunch, offer them to take some out for something, if they will be willing to 3D print you things. I have friends that come and ask me to 3D print them things all the time. I don't ask for any kind of payment if they're doing you know, a one-off every once in a while. It's not a big deal for me. I have had a friend who came to me for 3D printing cookie cutters for a while, and she paid me for that and we would do invoice and everything, but I was basically charging the minimum amount for it. Anyways, now that you know different ways that you can get things 3D printed, let's talk about some of my favorite 3D prints that I use on a regular basis. Now, the first one that I literally use every single time I'm streaming or recording is my mic arm mount. Now, as you can tell, I have my mic arm. It goes over top of my monitors, and I actually have that attached to the wall using some brackets and some wood. And in order to get the arm on that mount or on that bracket is I actually 3D printed a microphone stand mount. I think it cost me less than $2 in material to print this thing. If I wanted to buy one, it was gonna cost me a lot more money. I could have also made one out of wood, but making it out of the plastic just made it a lot easier for me. And it helped me you know, get a little bit more practice with some uh, manipulation of existing designs. This was one that I found out of Thingiverse. I will leave links for everything that I talk about down in the description below. Now, some other ones that I use on a regular basis are a lot of the storage things that I use. So I have ones for computer components, like I have this M.2 SSD uh, holder, which is very awesome and very useful for all my spare M.2s. I have this one, which was actually one of the first 3D prints I ever did on the printer that I bought myself. This one holds USBs, micro SDs, and full SD cards. This one is awesome. I throw it into one of my drawers. I have these battery storage uh, things that I use that I also put in my drawers, and it helps it, me keep uh, all my batteries organized. I know that if it's in one of these holders, it's a fully charged battery. And then I put it into another holder if it's a depleted battery and I have to charge it. I also have one that I use to store my spare hard drives or hard drives that are not currently in a computer to help keep them safe and help minimize the damage. Now that I've been using laptops a lot more, especially with work, I actually printed a lot of laptop accessories. For example, this is a vertical uh, 3D printed laptop stand. I slide my laptop in here like this. It helps keep uh, airflow really, really good when I'm not using the, the display on the laptop and I'm just having it in a docked mode. This was awesome. I, I lined it with some foam tape to help protect the laptop from any kind of scratches. Uh, this printed in maybe 12 hours, so not too bad. I have these little things that I actually keep in my laptop bag and these allow me to prop up the back end of any of the laptops that I use in order to get a little bit more airflow and kind of adjust the, the angle of the keyboard a little bit. This is a super helpful one. I keep it on my laptop. I use it with my work laptop. I use it with my gaming laptop that I also use to edit on. Um, super, super helpful. And these printed in absolutely no time. They fit together very nicely. The person who designed this did a very good job. At one point, I was also using a 3D printed design to prop up my laptop, keep it in an angle while also using the display. I don't currently use that right now because I am using a 
arm mount for uh, my laptops, but I was using that in the past. Speaking of stands, I have some great controller stands that I use. So I have this one for PlayStation controllers. Um, it's pretty awesome. I don't have a PlayStation anymore, but I still have the controller. I still use it every once in a while for some PC games, but this stand is very nice. It helps me keep them organized and it helps me charge them a little bit easier without having cables all over the place. I cable organized um, the back of my little entertainment unit in order to charge these nicely. And then I also have this very simple one for my Xbox controllers, which is very nice. I actually have a couple of these printed out and I keep them in my uh, entertainment unit as well for all my Xbox controllers. Now, speaking of stands, I have this headphone stand, which is super awesome, um, made by the MakerBot team. And I've printed these in a wide variety of sizes for all my different headphones. All of the headphones that I keep stored in the entertainment unit are all hanging on, on one of these, which is super nice. Um, they take a little while to print, but they're definitely worth it. They're very strong. Um, they look good. They look like a great little headphone stand, and I use these a lot. I also took a course in designing Infusion 360 and designed this um, headphone stand, or sorry, headphone hanger for my desk at work. Um, and this is awesome. I just go ahead and throw my headphones on it and it hangs it off the edge of my desk um, and kind of keeps them out of the way so that they're not constantly on top of my desk, but they're very easily accessible. You can also 3D print some things for your hobbies or uh, you know things that you're super into. For example, I've been getting really into mechanical keyboards, so I actually have this loop station that I 3D printed where it allows me to separate the switch um, into all of its components, the spring, the stem, and everything. It allows me to easily lubricate all of my parts. I also 3D printed these switch holders so that I can keep the, the switches safe and protected so I don't bend the pins when they're not currently in use. Um, I actually 3D printed a whole bunch of these so that I can have them whenever I'm taking apart or reassembling a keyboard. Now, if you own a GoPro, you can 3D print a ton of accessories for those. For example, I 3D printed this little holder for my GoPro. This is an awesome tool. I use this for some of the B-roll shots that I use and that I do. Um, it keeps it very stable. I've also 3D printed a um, cap mount so that you can actually mount your GoPro to an empty water bottle. And then you can use that to help float your GoPro in the water in case you're gonna be doing some water shots. I've also 3D printed some other mounts that I've used. Uh, it's an awesome tool if you have any kind of action camera. I've also 3D printed a bunch of stuff for my VR setups. For example, I 3D printed these adapters for my Oculus Quest 2 so that I could mount the Vive Deluxe headset on there. I've 3D printed some battery mounts for some of my other head straps. I've 3D printed a couple of holders for my controllers. Awesome tool, again, if you have VR. If you have any smart home items, like a Google Home or the Amazon Echo products, there's a lot of mounts and stands that you can print for those as well. And I use those quite a bit, especially for my Google Homes, because I like them to be uh, standing upwards so that I can actually see them and the speaker is facing me when it's actually playing music. I'm sure many of you know that you can use 3D printing for a lot of D&D stuff. I've used my printer to print dice towers. I've used it to print some miniatures, although I use my resin printers for those now. Um, I've used it for a whole bunch of little things. I've used it for little tokens. You can 3D print basically a whole bunch of things for D&D, and there's entire communities around 3D printing for D&D. And last but not least, you can just 3D print little things for yourself. So for example, I like spicing up my little space here with little things that I enjoy. So I 3D printed this little companion cube, which I really like and I keep this right beside my computer. I've 3D printed a bunch of Star Wars uh, pieces. They're a lot of fun. And I mean, you can just 3D print a lot of things that you would never ever think of. So I hope this video helped you. I hope it either gave you some ideas of some things that you can get 3D printed, either at your public library from a friend or from a you know third party source, or even convince you to get a 3D printer for yourself. Now, I'm not gonna lie, 3D printing can get very frustrating. Um, there are a lot of growing pains sometimes with 3D printing, but I thoroughly enjoy it. Sometimes I will go months without using my printer because I ran into an issue. I'll get frustrated and I'll stop, but I'll go back to it. I'll fix it later. And I have 3D printed so many things. I'll think of something that I need to use. I'll go ahead and search and see if an STL exists for it. If it's something simple enough that I think I can design myself, like that headphone hanger, then I will do it. 
And if not, then I will go and buy something. But I really do hope this video helped you. And if it did, I really appreciate it if you like, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. As I mentioned, every single design that I talked about that has an online uh, version of it, I will link it down in the description below. Special thanks to my patron sponsors, Thought Slime, Step Back, and Rojo Son of Dojo. And thank you for watching the end of this video. As always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Friday.